We're grateful for the contribution from the Heat Island Group at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So in this graph, we can look at the solar absorbance. And this is the emissivity of a surface for different colors, black all the way to white, and the temperature rise that they incur when placed in sunlight. We see a 45 degree, 45 degree Celsius difference between white surfaces and black surfaces. So what effect does this have on our houses when we have a black roof or a white roof? We have a direct effect where light colored roofs reduce your air conditioning use. We have an indirect effect where light colored surfaces result in a lower neighborhood temperature. And we have an indirect indirect effect where reduced air conditioning use results in reduced greenhouse gas emissions mitigating global warming. We can see it's not rocket science. We're not the first people to ever do this. However, what we have changed is before white roofs had to be white, where now we have new colors that can appear dark, but yet reflect a good portion of solar radiation. They're very attractive, and everyone's doing it. Here, here's my house. How about yours? By reducing air conditioning demand, Los Angeles could save $100,000 per hour. And independent of avoided CO2, the higher albedo, or lower emissivity surfaces, have a cooling effect on the planet. And the surfaces we make white result in less carbon dioxide emissions. So what is this worth? What if we were trading carbon dioxide at $25 a ton? Cool roofs alone would be worth $125 billion. One question I often hear is cool roofs must be bad in a cold environment because they won't absorb sunlight. It's also worth noting that at night we radiate from our roof. And the cooler roofs have a lower emissivity and therefore radiate less. Cool roofs, well, they prevent your house from overheating in the day from the sunlight. They also reduce your heat loss during the night because the lower emissivity surface radiates less. So cool roofs represent a very inexpensive and environmentally friendly technology. Let's end with some thoughts about efficiency and its effect on energy use and our impact on the environment. Well, in California, we're very proud and like to show off the fact that our electricity consumption per person hasn't risen since 1973. We recognize the energy consumption rate of the human race has grown exponentially over the centuries with increase in efficiency. This is the global power consumption rate as a function of the different fuels since 1965. This shows the increase in rate of carbon dioxide emissions over the past two centuries. This shows the same global carbon dioxide emissions as a function of what the different sources are. And for Guatemala, per person, and for the whole country. And while we're very proud of the fact that we now make refrigerators that are four times as efficient as before, this increase in efficiency is coupled with a great increase of standby power loss. This is the power consumed by electrical commodities that are at the time not being used, such as TiVo recorders or remote control units. And additionally, does the increase in efficiency mean these old units are not being used anymore? As claimed by this article by David Owen in The New Yorker, that the inefficient units just go into the basement and are still being used. In Javen's paradox, the theory is that as you use energy more efficiently, that energy results in more services for you. Therefore, the energy itself becomes more valuable, has a higher demand, and is used at a greater rate. I found it very interesting how he pointed out opponents of Joven's paradox point out that only 8% of the GDP relies on primary energy. So they claim the efficiency of energy should have very little effect on people's choices. However, 100% of the GDP depends on primary energy. So human choices are going to be crucially dependent on the efficiency of our use of primary energy. And with respect to the decrease in the energy intensity of our economy, this decrease coincides with the loss of our heavy energy intensive industry to China, where China now uses very much energy to produce large goods that they sell to us. And so while we no longer consume this energy, we are responsible for the environmental impact because those goods are being produced for us. And this decoupling, if in fact we now are generating more wealth with less energy use, David Owen would claim that this extra wealth goes to buy other things that are produced with energy with the corresponding environmental impact. And so I leave you with these thoughts. It must have been in the 70s when the Commodore 64 came out and a friend of mine said, wow, that's more memory than you'll ever need. The computers we buy now have more than a million times that memory. 
And when has a computer company come forth and said, hey, we have enough memory? It's not going to happen. We find ways to use more and more memory, just like we find ways to use more and more energy. And the Buddha said, satisfying your desires is like satisfying fire with gasoline. My thoughts on the matter, increased efficiency will allow us to generate more services and wealth with less resource use. If we're doing this to reduce our use of resources, likely we will reduce our use of resources. If we do this to generate more services and goods, likely we will generate more services and goods with the same amount of energy. This energy will then become more valuable, its demand will go up, and our use of energy will increase. It's really up to us.